Hey guys, Andy from Backbone Adventures. So we're gonna talk about trails today. So that way when you come in, you kinda of already have an idea where you wanna go and that makes the check-in process a lot quicker. So these are just suggestions. You can take the machines anywhere you like. These are just trails in and around the Estes Park area that I personally like. So I need you to know one thing. You're gonna be riding in the Rocky Mountains and not to be a smart ass, but there are going to be rocks. Some more, some less, and we'll talk about that. Another thing is you want to allow time to really take it all in and experience. You don't need to just pound down miles the whole time. That's not really Colorado riding style. Um, it's beautiful here. So take the time and look for wildlife and check out the views and have a picnic, spend time with family and friends, maybe do a little shed hunting. I mean, you might see something along the edge of the trail, some tracks or whatever, and seen a lot of people find antlers out there. So. Just really take the time to uh, enjoy the whole, the whole experience. Now, another thing to note is we're going to talk about half day trails and full day trails, but you can, even if you're on a full day ride, you can still do a half day trail. And again, you know, you might want to just take your time out there instead of just pounding out as many miles as you can. Uh, check it all out. Take some time. Spend some time with your significant other out there. Just all the different things that you can do um, just to really experience it all. So let's talk about trails that are open in the winter and spring months. You have Bunch School Road. It's about 30 minutes away. Tons of parking there. Not a whole lot of views, but there are a few. Not a ton of wildlife either, but every now and, you know, now and then you'll see a stray moose walk through. Sometimes some bear. It feels a little busy up there, to be honest. Now the lower trails are open, fast, and really easy. The upper trails, which we call the ironclad loop, is very rocky and steep. Now there's kind of a boulder playground up there that's an attraction. A lot of people like to go there just to play around in that area, so that's kind of a, a neat feature. Switzerland Trail is a customer favorite. It's about 50 minutes away. But if you're riding, doing a half day ride, we add the extra drive time to get to and from the trail without cutting into your ride time. There's plenty of parking up there. The trails just seem uh, to be vast and they go forever. Lots of views up there. Uh, looking back on the city of Boulder and the Indian Peaks mountain range. There's a lot of elk and moose in the area, so keep your eyes peeled. It's just very easy trails. They're fast and flowy, especially down on the south end near Gordon Gulch. And then up towards the north end, uh, you have some really awesome hill climbs with uh, beautiful mountain ranges. A Pennsylvania Gulch, Gulch is another part of the trail that uh, a lot of people like to do. It's very steep and rocky and skinny, very challenging, uh, especially for people uh, riding Jeeps. They like that area. Uh, a feature in the middle of the trail system is called Mount Alto. It has a, uh, an amazing view and there's just picnic tables uh, scattered throughout uh, for no apparent reason. Uh, great place to stop and have a picnic, just hang out. Uh, lots of things. There's something for everybody on Switzerland Trail. And like I said, it is uh, definitely a customer favorite. So the following half and full day trails are open from June 15th to December 1st. Let's start with half day trails. Johnny Park is a, definitely a customer favorite. It's only 25 minutes away from our shop and there's tons of parking up there. It has a really fun vibe and an inviting feel and it's an extremely pretty area. There's views all over the place from one end of the trail to the next. Some of the best views. There's lots of elk, moose, and bear in the area. Had a lot of people find uh, elk antlers and moose, moose antlers up there, so maybe take the time to look out for those. Now down on the east end, you have a, a part of the trail called Button Rock, and it's really smooth and fast, flowy, with some corners in there, uh, climbing up the hills. Uh, I really like riding that area a lot. In the middle of the trail, you do have a rocky section you have to deal with for about a mile, but you have options in there to take a harder line or easier line and challenge yourself. Uh, it, it really kind of breaks up the trail and makes it interesting. I don't want to come on to there seems to be pull-offs all along the whole trail system where you can just kind of get away and have like your own little section. Uh, it's pretty neat for just having a, a, a picnic or a special time with family and friends or a significant other. Uh, 
some awesome little offshoot trails that take you out to some really nice business. Again, it's a customer favorite. I think you'll really like it. I really like that trail. Pearson Park is 30 minutes away. Parking is a little tight. You will need to know how to back up a trailer there. Now, some people use, can use that for a full day trail because there's quite a bit up there. Jeepers like to go through because it pops out on the other side and connects to the Johnny Park Trail just a mile down the road. It's one of my favorite areas. Lots of deep, dark woods in there, and I kind of like that. It's chock full of wildlife. It's a big game area, so lots of huge elk and moose. There's some nice views on the south end, looking back at Long's Peak, and some great views on the north end, looking back at the city of Estes Park. In the middle of the trail, you have what's called an alluvial fan from a flood we had in 2013 when the mountainside washed away. And that's a really neat area to check out. The, the trails are pretty easy. There's scattered rocks throughout, as you would expect in the Rocky Mountains, some creek crossings and such. Uh, but really just uh, a good time up there, I think. Uh, beautiful meadows uh, on either end. So take that one into consideration. Pole Hill Road is 10 minutes away. The downside is the parking is extremely tight. You will definitely need to know how to back up a trailer there and only a few machines can fit in there. It's also a very uh, short trail system. So there's not a lot of trail. You might be doing some things uh, two or three times. You don't really feel like you're in the backwoods as you do uh, on say Pearson Park or some of the other trails. It feels kind of close to town. In the very beginning, you have a, a rocky section, but you have options to challenge yourself or not. And then after that, it levels out, and it's just some cool trails with awesome washouts to play on. Uh, there's not a lot of wildlife up there. You might see a deer, possibly. Uh, it does have one of the best views by far up there, looking back on the city of Estes Park. have a lot of people that propose up there. Middle St. Grain, or MSV as we call it, is 40 minutes away. The parking is extremely tight there. You can use it for a half day or a full day ride. It goes into another trail called Park Creek, which we'll talk about in a second. But on a half day ride, you can just ride out to uh, Coney Flats, which is the main attraction. It feels very, it's very deep, like backwoods, it's bordering uh, a wilderness area. So you, you really are back in, the, back in the mountains, getting the full experience. It's extremely difficult, very, very rocky. There's nothing fast moving there at all. So you need to know that. Sometimes you can run into lots of jeepers up there that are hung up in what we call the rock garden section. And some, sometimes that can be kind of entertaining watching them go through, through there messing up their jeeps. <clears throat> the main attraction at Middle St. Vrain are all the water crossings. You're gonna go through water holes, mud holes, rivers, and then there's Coney Flats. Uh, which is that main attraction I was talking about. It's where uh, the river widens out about 300 feet across. The water's pretty deep. It's coming right off the glaciers that are just right there. So it's a beautiful view as well. That's an extremely fun area. A lot of people like to hang out there. Great place for a picnic. Definitely the main attraction. <clears throat> There's a lot of moose and bear in the area, but it's tightly wooded. So you have to be on the lookout for that kind of thing. Now it connects to a trail called Park Creek, which goes up to, again, it's very rocky, goes up to a, an old Air Force jet plane crash site, which is kind of cool. And also there's a, a place called Pony Lake up there. And it's a lake you can hike out to about 200 yards away. Seems like there's always moose in that area. They like to hang out there. These trails require skill, and at the very least, they require common sense. I've seen a lot of riders who've never ridden before in their lives go up there and do just fine. But again, it requires common sense, picking your way through the rocks. The Storm Mountain Trail system is 45 minutes away. There's tons of parking out there, but you are going to have to travel up a six-mile mountain road that might feel a little sketchy to you. There was a fire, uh, the Cameron Feet. Cameron Peak Fire in 2020, which is the largest fire in Colorado history, that devastated the trail. There's a lot of green undergrowth, and most of the trees are burned. You really do feel like you're way off in the backwoods there. It's a very unique area. Uh, the trails are vast and, and diverse. They just seem to kind of go forever and change all over the place. You run from 5,500 feet all the way to 10,000 feet, where you can reach the Storm Mountain Summit. It's kind of challenging, but uh, the view up top is uh, absolutely stunning. 
pictures just don't do it justice. Now on a half day ride, you can make it to the Storm Mountain Summit in time. So that's something that some people do. There's lots of wildlife in the area. Probably the best wildlife possibility. A lot of deer, elk, moose, and bear. Rollins Pass is 80 minutes away, but it's so worth it. it. Honestly, I could talk about Rollins Pass all day long. I love being up there. And see, that's the thing. You're going to experience it, and you're going to go home, and you're going to be talking about it for months and years to come. It's, it's just something that we all just love being there. It's a very magical place. The trails are really easy and very wide, and you can uh, elect to take a, a more difficult route if you like, but there's views all along the whole trail system. It's, it just feels very secluded because it's so far back into the mountains, and you feel like you just have the whole place to yourself. Uh, it's, it's private and, and just so awesome. So that more difficult trail you can take is called Jenny Creek. And it, you know, it's skinny, it's rocky, there's creek crossings, there's uh, some small meadows in there with a bunch of wildflowers, almost like somebody planted them all there. There's so many colors, some homesteads, old homesteads back in there. Uh, really a cool area. Dumps you out uh, back onto the main trail where there's some lakes up there. And these lakes, you can just see the trout uh, there in the water. Uh, bring a fly pole. Uh, you will need a license, it's catch and release. And there's just glaciers right there coming off, uh, right there near the lakes and water running down. And uh, right in that area, there's a mine shaft that when blown apart, turned into a cavern. So that's pretty cool to check out. Um, it is a little cooler up there, even in the summertime. So bring a jacket because you are going to get over the tundra line uh, above 12,000. You know, you're going to get up to about 12,000 feet. So, uh, but from the top, the views are to die for up there. Now, if you're doing a multi-day Jeep, uh, there's a trail just down the road from Rollins, about a mile, called Kingston Peak. And that is uh, another really wicked trail system uh, that gets you over Tundra Line. And a little bit more difficult up there, though, with some cliff edges and rocks. So the last trail I want to talk to you about is Old Fall River Road. And it's about 15 to 20 minutes away from our shop in Rocky Mountain National Park. Now you can't ride ATVs and UTVs on this road. It's a nine mile dirt mountain road that goes all the way up to the Alpine Visitor Center. Now a lot of people in a Jeep like to do this in the morning, you know, get the top back, take the doors off. And then uh, after the morning, they head on over to Pole Hill or Johnny Park for a real off-road experience. But the views uh, uh, along Old Fall River Road are breathtaking. There's waterfalls just right off the trail you can check out lots of wildlife uh, you're, you're gonna see wildlife up there elk moose uh, deer bighorn sheep you name it it's it's all, they're all over the place now I want to tell you a little bit of a backstory here a um, couple years back uh, as a staff we decided to go out and do an e-bike ride out there for just something to do and it was in the uh, in the fall when we did it and it was uh, such a cool experience. We all sat down and talked while we were up there just looking at the, at the beautiful views. We we're like, we really need to bring this experience to people. They, they really need to see this. Um, so we got permitted with the National Park and we do guided e-bike rides up there. Um, it's an experience you're never gonna forget. So take that into consideration. Whether you're really experienced or brand new at this, no matter what trail you pick, I think you're going to have a really good time. We'll see you soon.